Twenty-two burps later, Harry had the last purchase can in his hand. It somehow tasted bright green, extra fizzy and limer than lime. Honestly, Harry didn't see how this was going to work. You couldn't go up to someone and say, Now I'm going to surprise you, or, And now I'm going to tell you the punchline of the joke and it'll be really funny. It ruined the shock value. In Harry's state of mental preparedness, Lucius Malfoy could have walked past in a ballerina outfit and it wouldn't have gotten him to do a proper spit take. He prepared to swig another drink. A newspaper called The Quibbler was showing the following headline. Boy who lived gets Draco Malfoy pregnant. Yeah! Screamed Draco as bright green liquid sprayed all over him from Harry's direction. Too many competing objections. That was the problem. Every time Harry tried to say, But we're only eleven! The objection, But men can't get pregnant! Demanded first priority and was then run over by, But there's nothing between us! Really? Hey, Draco, you know what I bet is even better for becoming friends than exchanging secrets? Committing murder? I have a tutor who says that. Who've you got in mind? The guy who came up with this headline. Not a guy. A girl. A ten-year-old girl. Can you believe it? She went nuts after Mother died and her father, who owns this newspaper, is convinced that she's a seer. So when he doesn't know, he asks Luna Lovegood and believes anything she says. Are you kidding me? That's even worse than muggle journalism, which I would have thought was physically impossible. She has some kind of perverse obsession about the Malfoys, too. As soon as I'm old enough, I'm going to rape her. Green liquid spurted out of Harry's nostrils. It was at this point that Harry came to the sudden realization that, when he had discussed committing murder as a bonding method, there had been exactly one person in the conversation who thought they were both joking. Right, because he seemed like such a normal kid. And he is a normal kid. He is just what you'd expect a baseline male child to be like if he were raised by the Dark Lord's most fearsome servant and or doting father. Something wrong? I was just surprised at how you were willing to discuss it so openly. Are you joking? Luna Lovegood's word against mine? The courts use veritas serum, but it's a joke, really. You just obliviate yourself before you testify and then claim the other person was memory charmed with a false memory. And if I'm involved in something, then it impinges on the honor of a noble house, so it goes to the Wizengamot, where father has the votes. After I'm found not guilty, the Lovegood family has to pay reparations for tarnishing my honor. A cold chill was coming over Harry, a chill that came with instructions to keep his voice and face normal. Note to self, overthrow government of magical Britain at earliest convenience. If you decide to side with the Malfoys under the table, our power and your reputation, you could get away with things even I can't do. Man, imagine Looney Lovegood trying to claim that she was raped by Draco Malfoy and the boy who lived. Not even Dumbledore would believe her. Actually, I'd as soon have you hold off on that for a while. After I found out that headline came from a girl a year younger than me, I wasn't exactly thinking of murder or rape. I was thinking, someday I'm going to marry that woman. Draco made a horrid crisplutch sound. You've got even weirder taste than a Lestrange. But you could just rape her anyway. She's probably crazy enough to like it. Charming, happy, generous with his favors to his friends, Draco wasn't a psychopath. That was the sad and awful part knowing human psychology well enough to know that Draco wasn't a monster. It was very simple, very human. It was the default if nothing else intervened. To Draco, his enemies weren't people. Draco, you want to explain the whole blood purity thing to me? I'm sort of new. Our powers have been growing weaker, generation by generation, as the mudblood taint grows. Where Salazar and Godric and Rowena and Helga once raised Hogwarts by their power, creating the locket and the sword and the diadem and the cup and the hat, no modern wizard has risen to challenge them. We are fading, all fading into muggles as we interbreed with their spawn and allow our squibs to live. If the taint is not checked, soon our wands will break and all our arts will cease. The line of Merlin will end and the blood of Atlantis fail. Our children will be left scratching at the dirt to survive like the mere muggles, and darkness will cover the world forever. Classic, classic pattern. The fall from grace, the need to guard what purity remained against contamination, the past sloping upward, and the future sloping only downward. I have to correct you on one point of fact. Your information about the muggles is a bit out of date. We aren't exactly scratching at the dirt anymore. What? What do you mean, we? We, the scientists. The line of Francis Bacon and the blood of the Enlightenment. What in the name of Merlin are you talking about, Potter? All right, quick check. 
Have wizards ever been to the moon? What? Go to the... You can't apparate to somewhere you've never been, and how would anyone get to the moon in the first place? Hold on. I'd like to show you a book I brought with me. Harry had inherited the nine magical Varus ability to remember where all his books were, even after seeing them just once, which was rather mysterious considering the lack of any genetic connection. Harry turned the pages of the book until he found the picture he wanted to show to Draco. That picture. THE picture, if only one picture in all the world were to survive. That is what the Earth looks like from the moon. Draco slowly leaned over. There was a strange expression on his young face. What are those? Those are human beings. They are wearing suits that cover their whole bodies to give them air because there is no air on the moon. That's impossible. No muggle could ever do that. How? This is a rocket going up. The fire pushes it higher and higher until it gets to the moon. Science doesn't work by waving wands and chanting spells. It works by knowing how the universe works on such a deep level that you know exactly what to do in order to make the universe do what you want. And science builds from generation to generation. There is no equivalent in science to your lost arts that raised Hogwarts. In science, our powers wax by the year. You're of Slytherin, Draco. Don't you see the implication? Wizards can learn to use this power. You think you can master both arts, add the powers together, and... make yourself lord of the two worlds? Harry gave an evil laugh. It just seemed to come naturally at this point. You have to realize, Draco, that the whole world you know, all of Magical Britain, is just one square on a much larger game board. But I really am Ravenclaw, you know, not Slytherin. I don't want to rule the universe. I just think it could be more sensibly organized. But make no mistake, Draco, true science really isn't like magic. The power comes with a cost, a cost so high that most people refuse to pay it. And that cost? Learning to admit you're wrong. Trying to figure out how something works on that deep level, the first 99 explanations you come up with are wrong. The hundredth is right. So you have to learn how to admit you're wrong over and over and over again. It doesn't sound like much, but it's so hard that most people can't do true science. I just want you to know I'm offering to share some of my knowledge, if you want. There's just one condition. Now, don't mistake me and think that I'm trying to drive a wedge between you and your father. It's not about that. It's just about me wanting to deal with someone my own age. Your moves in our game have to be your own. That's my condition. That I'm dealing with you, Draco, not your father. Enough! Way too much. I have to go off and think about this. Not to mention, it's about time to board the train. Take your time. Just remember it's not an exclusive offer, even if you take me up on it. True science does sometimes take more than one person. The sounds of the train platform changed from blurs into murmurs as Draco wandered off. Hello. Can we interest Jen in joining the Order of Chaos? Aftermath. Not too long after that, when all the day's fuss had finally subsided, Draco was bent over a desk with quill in hand. He had a private room in the Slytherin dungeons with its own desk and its own fire. Sadly, not even he rated a connection to the flu system, but at least Slytherin didn't buy into that utter nonsense about making everyone sleep in dorms. Draco knew that Potter probably felt a lot more sympathy toward Dumbledore's faction than Potter was letting on, though Draco did think Potter could be tempted. But it was crystal clear that Potter was trying to tempt Draco just as Draco was trying to tempt him. And it was also clear that Potter was brilliant, and a whole lot more than just slightly mad, and playing a vast game that Potter himself mostly didn't understand, but Potter had managed to choose a tactic that Draco couldn't just walk away from. He had offered Draco a part of his own power, gambling that Draco couldn't use it without becoming more like him. His father had called this a very advanced technique, and had warned Draco that it often didn't work. Draco knew he hadn't understood everything that had happened, but Potter had offered him the chance to play, and right now it was his. And if he blurted the whole thing out, it would become his father's. Dear Father, Suppose I told you that I met a student at Hogwarts, not already part of our circle of acquaintances, who called you a flawless instrument of death, and said that I was your one weak point. What would you say about him? It didn't take very long after that for an owl to bring Draco the reply. My beloved son, I would say that you had been so fortunate as to meet someone who enjoys the intimate confidence of our friend and valuable ally, Severus Snape. 